Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. So 2023 has come and it's been a long time since I made my last video. Reason being that at first I got Corona, then I got the flu and then I was rushed to hospital. Nothing bad, nothing Corona related and I'm all healthy now. So it did take some time to create new content, but now I'm back with a new video. Last year ended with the Corsair HS70, a headset when reasonably priced, is a great wireless headset with some awesome software. So why not continue with the headset and start with the Game Deck from SteelSeries? Now before I used the Corsair as my main Friday evening gaming with my mates headset, I used the SteelSeries Arctic Pro with its main advantage that it has that little dial where you can switch between the game and the Discord audio. The audio quality was okay for gaming, but it wasn't clearly made for music. But when scouring the internet, I came across the SteelSeries Game Deck several times. Now this is meant to improve your audio a lot, since it has high res audio. But since the chat mix dial functioned just fine, why would I get it? Is it really worth that much money? And will it improve my audio? So when I saw the game deck for a nice price, meaning second hand, I just bought it. So on today's episode, it's the Steel Series game deck. Here I have two versions of the same headset, the Steel Series Artix Pro. One with the game deck, that's supposed to be this one, and the other one with the well the standard game dial. The Steel Series website is very persuasive about its benefits, but the question remains: is it worth the additional 150 euros? Okay, it's on sale at the moment of writing. Today it will only set you back 90 euros, but that's still a lot of money for a gaming deck. For that kind of money, you can also take a look at the excellent Sennheiser GSX300, which will cost you well about 97 euros, or maybe even the FIO E10K which will cost you about the same, but that one doesn't have a mic in, so maybe that one isn't the correct one. Both are high-res audio devices, which I found to be of great value. So let's explore a bit deeper to see what we're looking at here. The great thing about the Game Deck and the Chatmix dial is that these devices have the two audio volumes. If you turn it to the left, you will hear the game better, and if you turn it to the right, you will hear your mates better. I found that during gaming that this is one of the best features ever. You always have those tense moments where one of your mates is constantly talking at you, and you just don't want to hear what he's saying, and you want to hear what's happening in the game. Now, normally you have to quickly alt-top out of the game and turn his or her volume down in Discord. Well, no more. Both the game deck and the dial have this feature, and I truly love it. Something I don't like, and as a matter of fact, I find very annoying, is the driver interface that comes with this headset. You get all these options that I never even use, like moments, where it will record something cool in a limited number of games, none of which I play. Now, this is turned on by default. It also scans your PC to see what games you have installed. Kind of invasive for me and I felt violated. They also have sonar so you can hear your enemies better. And this also has a couple of presets for games I don't play and I don't even care about. And again, you have to sign into yet another piece of software. And why is it? Why is it that you need to sign into some software enabled to use a headset? Well, they can track your usage. Even if you opt out of everything, they will still track you. And hey, Steel Series, have you ever heard of the GDPR? It's supposed to be opt-in, not opt-out. I just want to use and set up my headset. Now, in the past, you had a tiny bit of software that's called the Steel Series Engine, which is great with everything that you would want. But now it's part of the GG software. The separate engine is no more. It's buried under a pile of shitty options. 
please Sears, just give us back the ye olden engine. And here you have both driver interfaces side by side. On the left you can see the Artex Pro or the game dial and on the right the game deck. Now on the surface they may look different but in reality they are exactly the same. On the left you can change the DTS headphone, uh, surround profile, stereo profile and everything else. The same goes to the right with the equalizer having a bit more presets and just a little bit more. It also has the gain which increases the overall power delivered by the speakers. You can also change the output from speakers to streaming. On the right you can change the microphone side tone, microphone volume and here you even have the noise reduction. You have a little button over here in which you can set the other settings for the device itself, the OLED brightness and the screen timeout. Now overall you can set everything the way you want to have it. It is clear, uh, you can find everything where it's supposed to be and it's just a nice driver interface and I just cannot find any reason why you would ever want to use the GG software. Okay, now that we have all of that, <laughs> that put aside, let's start with the specification. What kind of hardware components and stuff are we looking at? Well, first the chat mix dial. It is, well, just a dial, nothing more, nothing less. What is on the inside is a bit of a mystery to me. Besides using to force it to get it open, I couldn't find any mention of what's inside. My guess it's just a generic codec, if there even is one. In my opinion, it's just a piece of software and everything just gets passed through. But maybe there is something real techish in there, like the one you have on your motherboard. But what is interesting is what you will find on the inside of the game deck. First up, it's the TUSSB2036, which takes care of the USB connections. It's made by Texas Instruments, which is known for their quality components. It is a two or three port hub for the Universal Serial Bus with an optional Serial EEPROM interface. Now, that sounds really cool, and it is. The idea behind it is that you can use it to attach maybe a USB printer, your keyboard or any other USB device. Next is the CX20833. This is a connectant digital signal processor which usually adds or removes stuff from your audio. In this case it's a cost effective Dolby and DTS headphone decoder. So basically it just adds Dolby and DTS support. Now, the Dolby option is never to be seen in this headphone, but the DTS Headphone X option is something that can be used. More on that later. It is capable of 24 bits and 192 kilohertz. Then there's the STM32F070CB, uh, these names, which is an ARM-based 32-bit MCU or microcontroller unit. Now this is where the brains of the device and takes care of what is supposed to happen when you change settings and it just takes care of stuff. And last but not least, it's the digital to analog converter. The reason why this game deck is so expensive. The ESS Sabre. Now as many of you by now may know, I just love the Sabre series. Nearly all devices that have the Sabre digital to analog converter are on my favorites list. From the Creative AE5 to the Asus Ragetrix Pro and the Audio Crest Dragonfly. The ESS ES9018 isn't the top of the line that ESS has on offer. Now it's not even in the Pro or Audiophile series, but that doesn't matter. It's still one of the most capable digital to analog converters out there. And it is still the standard digital to analog converter that a lot of devices use. It's a reference series, 32 bits, 384 kHz, 8 channel audio digital to analog converter. It is built with the HyperStream design in order to reduce jitter and latency. It has more than 120 decibels of total harmonic distortion and it can handle both a DSD and PCM audio at an incredible fidelity. Overall, I judge these components as very good, even bordering the hi fi range. All components are capable of handling audio at 24 bits and 192 kHz or even more. If I didn't know any more than just these data sheets, I'd be thrilled.
there is one thing that I would like to address. Uh, when talking about the components, I stated that all components can handle 24 bits and 192 kilohertz or even more. But sadly, you can only get the device up to 24 bits and 96 kilohertz maximum. Now, this technically is high-res audio, but still, it's like buying a Ferrari and then have the engine capped at 100 kilometers an hour. And the 24 bits and 96 kilohertz are only available in high-res mode. When going to the gaming mode, it will not even go past 16 bits and 48 kilohertz. So your Ferrari will be capped off to no faster than, say, a golf cart. Now, I know that one of the reasons it is limited is the DTS thing and... Well, there's a lot more audio processing going on, a lot more audio paths and everything. But still, this isn't high-res gaming audio like they say on the website and on the box. Okay, and now the moment you've probably all waited for, the Rightmark Audio Analyzer results. Is the game deck better than the chat mix dial? Let's with, start with the result for the chat mix. The frequency response gets a very good, which is impressive, but that's all there is to say about the goods. A very poor for the noise level and the total harmonic distortion plus noise, and the rest gets pours. Overall, it gets an average. I was a bit shocked to see these numbers. Now, I didn't expect excellence and very goods, but maybe several goods or maybe an average would be nice. So what about the game deck? Let's start in gaming mode. A very good, a good, and even an average. This isn't that all that amazing. Okay, it's better than the Chetmix dial, but not as astonishing as you might expect. When comparing the two side by side, the game deck is an improvement on every front. The noise level is a lot better, the dynamic range increases, the total harmonic distortion is better, and the intermodular distortion is also way better. The stereo crosstalk is the only thing that hasn't improved. So what about the high res mode? Is it really better? Let's switch over to high res mode and see what that tells us. Now, please keep in mind that the comparison is also between 24 bits and 96 kilohertz and 16 bits and 48 kilohertz. And especially the graphs, well, they will get distorted. I couldn't see any major difference in these numbers. In my opinion, this all falls within the margin of error or differences in measuring. Shocking. High res doesn't equal better audio. And as a small point of interest, I also tested the sound card that came with the SteelSeries 9H. A ye olden headset that was my all time favorite, especially coupled with the Sound Blaster X5. This headset came with the SC2 or Sound Card 2. And hey, it has Dolby Surround. So how much has audio improved over those last couple of years? Well, let's see how the chat mix, the game deck, and the SC2 compare. Oh, and there's as there's no difference between the game mode and the high res mode, I chose game mode, so all results will be in 16 bits and 48 kilohertz. Okay, boy oh boy. The SC2 on the right column is on par with the game deck and even better with the stereo crosstalk. Okay, let's leave the sound card 2 out of the equation as it will only complicate matters. I did a listening session with both the chat mix and the game deck. Now, as I said before, the chat mix just isn't made for listening to music. It sounds dull, uninspiring, it lacks energy and sounds, well, like it's struggling to produce audio. When gaming, it sounds a lot better and there's, it's more of its, in its natural habitat. Gaming is what it's meant for, but still, you know, it was a bit dullish. The game deck sounds a lot better. It has more energy, more power, it has more oomph. And you can hear the better separation of channels. You can you will be able to pinpoint the origins of the sound source better. When listening to music, the game deck isn't at its best as well. As with the game deck, it just sounds dull, like a small child that doesn't want to eat its greens. Listening to high res mode didn't do anything for me. I just couldn't hear any difference. Um, I tried, I tried, but in the end, I just stopped trying. Maybe it's me, maybe Corona affected my hearing, but please no. 
One last thing, I also tested the DTSX surround node mode. Now, many of you might now know that I have a serious dislike of anything surroundish. It's usually rubbish and it doesn't make the sound surround. It's just a lot of echoes and reverb. Now, DTSX is one of those very few where it does make it a bit more surroundish and it does have, well, a bit more positive effect on the audio quality. It isn't that great, but at least it's not a downgrade as we've seen in so many other sound options and other gear. And now for my conclusion. Now at the start of this video, I wanted to know if the game deck improves your audio and if it's worth your money. And the quick answer is yes. But before you rush out to buy one, take one second to hear the rest of my conclusion. The game deck does improve your audio over the chat mix dial. Both Widemark Audio Analyzer and myself detected an improvement in audio quality. The improvement doesn't make your audio as good as true hi-fi gear, but it is an improvement. The high-res mode didn't do anything for me, which is weird because of all the quality components used, like the mighty ESS Sabre. DTSX does work and is one of the better implementations of surround sound. But DTSX is available in both the chat mix and the game deck, making it no argument to get the game deck. Also, if you don't have a Steel Sears, this just isn't an upgrade for you. It's an upgrade when you have a Steel Sears headset, and that's all because of the USB Mini AB connector that no other headsets use. Okay, you can use the line out, but I don't think that the game deck is a, the best upgrade for you then. The game deck is an improvement for your Steel Series gear. And last but not least, is it worth the 150 euros? No, definitely not. It's worth 80 euros, they charge you now, or 90 euros. I think it is an interesting improvement for 80 euros. So with this ending, I would like to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. And I'd like to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye-bye.